Okay, now moving on to activity number four, which is using spreadsheet software. It tells us that Croatian Badminton League sells sports shirts. Okay, the sales worksheet in the Badminton spreadsheet contains details of the sales of different types of shirts. So inside the <coughs> Badminton spreadsheet, there is a worksheet called sales. Okay, so <coughs> open the Badminton worksheet. Let's do that straight away. Open the Badminton worksheet, and then it goes on to say. Uh, open enter task assess one your name candidate number and number in the footer of the worksheet so you can very simply come to insert inside text you have header and footer and then directly right now we are in the header I want to go to the footer so I type over here task ss1 my name candidate number center number okay so just remember right now we are still in the page layout view let's come out of this footer and just click on a blank cell if you come to the view tab, you can see we are in page layout. I need to come into normal view. Okay, so come back to normal view. Things come back to normal. Okay, so then it goes on to say, uh, enter. For, Sammy wants to know the total number of shirts sold. Enter a formula in cell D13 to calculate the total number of shirts sold. Okay, so uh, over here we have the shirts that have been sold. In D13, he wants to know the total of shirts that have been sold. So there are two ways you can do it. You can either type equals sum. Okay. Open your bra open brackets and say this is the range of values I want to add. Close your brackets. You can press enter. It gives you the total from here to here. The second method you can use is if you come into the home tab, you have the auto sum function. You can click here, click on sum. It asks you is this range correct? Is it from D2 to D12? Small change, not up to D12. You need to go up to D11. Sorry, D11 up to here. And press enter. You get the same value again. Then the question paper goes on to say, uh, save the spreadsheet as shirts. Okay, so we come here to file, save as, browse, and we change this to shirts. And say, okay. Then the question paper goes on to say, the pre, do not print at this stage, okay. The pre-tax price, pre-tax price meaning before tax is being applied. The pre-tax price of a shirt is the cost of the shirt plus the profit tip, okay. So before tax is being applied to the price of a shirt, uh, the cost of the shirt would be, uh, sorry, before tax is applied uh, to a shirt, the price of a shirt would be, price of a shirt, uh, sorry, the, uh, I'm sorry, I get it, put it wrong again. The pre-tax price of a shirt is the cost of the shirt plus the profit. So before tax is applied to the uh, shirt, the price of the shirt would be the cost of the shirt, the cost of the shirt plus whatever profit is there would be the pre-tax price okay anyway let's go in order it says the percentage profit is stored in cell c16 so over here you can see the percentage profit that needs to be applied to each shirt okay then the question goes on to say enter a formula in cell e2 to calculate the profit per shirt for a small female shirt okay so we come to e2 small female shirt we have let's make this column a bit bigger so now what happens is the cost of the shirt is 17.59 we are supposed to take 15 they're supposed to take 15 percent of that to calculate the profit okay you see over here they say the percentage profit that can be taken is only 15 okay so we're supposed to multiply this value with this value to know how much profit we will be getting from the shirt okay uh, oh, so right now if you notice here it's just 15 okay it doesn't say 15 percent so when we do the calculations we need to tell the computer that this is a percentage value so what I'll be doing is I'll be starting every formula with equal, equal, and tell the computer, take this value, and tell the computer that this is a percentage value, okay? And then tell the computer, multiply, shift 8, with the cost, okay? So now it tells us, for 17.59, the profit that you can apply is 2.6385. This is 15% of the cost, okay? Then the next question goes on to say, enter a formula in cell F2. To calculate the pre-tax price so over here they did tell us the formula of the pre-tax price the, pre the formula of the uh, pre-tax price of a shirt is the cost of the shirt plus the profit so we very simply say equal cost of the shirt plus the profit over here and we press enter now uh, if you move on to the next question it says uh, replicate this formula for the other shirts so what we can do over here is we can replicate this, click on this cell, and you can see this is the replication uh, symbol. You can apply the same formula to all the other cells. But then we're going to have a problem over here. The issue here is, even though when, when we replicate these cells, if you look over here carefully, just check this address, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is just watch this. 
This is C2 multiplied by C16. This is C3 multiplied by C17. This is C4 multiplied by C18. This is C5 multiplied by C19. Okay, so do you see the problem is when I replicate this formula, when this address changes, this address is also changing, which is wrong. I do not want this particular address to change. I want this address to be fixed. Okay, so that is what we call absolute cell reference. Okay, I need this cell to become an absolute cell reference, which means when I replicate the formula, even though this size, this size changes, this particular address should never change. Okay, so what I do is I put a dollar symbol in front of C and a dollar symbol in front of the cell number. Is it clear? Put a dollar symbol in front of C and a dollar symbol in front of the cell number. Okay, and then you press enter. Now look, when I replicate the cell, when I replicate the cell, if you check the address by, as I keep going down, the formula by, if you keep checking it, <coughs> you will notice this address changes, but this address will remain fixed. Okay, press escape, now watch. So you see C3, C16. C4, C16, C5, C16, okay? So this particular address does not change. Only this side keeps changing when I replicate the formula. Now when you come over here, we do not need anything to be locked. We do not need cell reference because once I replicate this formula, once I replicate this formula, I need the cell for both columns to change. I need C2, E2. Then when I come over here, I need C3, E3. When I come over here, I need C4, E4, isn't it? So in this particular column, none of the cell addresses need to be locked in. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it as it is. And then moving on, it says resave the spreadsheet. Print the spreadsheet on, so let's resave it first. And then it goes on to say print the uh, shared spreadsheet on one side of A4 showing the formula. So if you go to do a printout of this, let's make this column a bit bigger. And if you go to print this, if you say control P, which is print, uh, you would notice the values are over here, but the question paper specifically said showing the formulas. Okay, so what we have got to do is we have got to come back, come to formulas and tell the computer show formulas. Okay, so now over here you can see the formulas are visible. So when you go to print it as well, you can see the formulas are visible. Okay, question paper also says it should fit one side of A4. Yes, it is fitting one A4 paper. If it is not fitting for you, do not forget to make these columns smaller. Over here, you can make the columns smaller. And then it says, make sure that row and column headings are also shown. Okay, so you have to make sure that, so in order to make your row and column headings shown, you can come to page layout. Headings, view them, also print them. Okay, so what we're talking about row and column headings are these headings. Over here, A, B, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are what you call the row and column headings. And it also goes on to say that uh, make sure that all columns are wide enough to show the complete formula. Yes, that is possible. The entire formula is visible over here. 